Hey there folks and welcome back to another episode of Solar City Garage. If you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. If you're a new viewer, you might want to go back and watch uh, the previous videos on this. They're all numbered. This is a series style video. Uh, we're working on our Model T Ford engine today. We are uh, basically going to be doing the last work on this engine that we can while it's in the engine stand and we'll be bolting on as Derek from Vice Grip Garage says, all the accessorize. I love that channel. Anyway, back to our deal. So we're going to be putting on our intake manifold, exhaust manifold, uh, transmission cover, and makeshift oil filter, uh, generator, timer, and all that good little stuff. So we've got all of our stuff over here all laid out. Uh, we've got everything cleaned and painted. Uh, bolts re-threaded or chase the threads uh, we've got our gaskets that we need we have a remanufactured or well rebuilt generator from Langs we'll talk about that when we put it on also a new cutout and a new day timer and all the fasteners and stuff associated with that so by the end of this video we should be uh, pretty much wrapping up the engine and transmission series uh, until it's in the chassis and uh, we're doing final adjustments and things. So following this series will be the chassis series. Uh, we'll be working on the front uh, spindles and axle and we'll be working on uh, the steering column and uh, mounting the firewall so that we can slip the engine in and get all the ignition stuff and what wiring we can do. So, all right, stay tuned. We're going to get to work. Be right back. All right, we're back. We're going to, uh, first thing we're going to do is put on this uh, transmission cover so that we don't drop anything in here. Um, so we also, under the transmission cover, have purchased the, uh, we're gonna put the magnet in there, have purchased the, uh, for lack of a better term, oil filter. Uh, not only will it screen out something and we'll be able to see on the magnet uh, any chunks of metal in that, it also helps spread the oil out over the vans. So these are pretty inexpensive um, and easy to install. So what we're going to start with comes with two gaskets that go on here. We're going to glue this gasket to the hogshead because the hogshead surface is about the roughest. Okay, so we're going to put some sealer on there, line the bolts up. We'll be using a very small amount of the right stuff. And see, we left a little tip out there. So the next time we go to use it, pull that out. And that's all you waste right there. Now we don't need to go crazy here, okay? So we're just gonna put a very thin bead Right down it like this. This will help hold the gasket in place as well. But remember, we have to be able to get access to this if we need to adjust the bands or we want to look at the magnet or look at, see if there's any lint, stuff like that. So, all right, there we go. We'll squeeze out our little tip there. Should turn the pressure off. Okay, now that we got our little bead of uh, the right stuff on there, we're going to put the first gasket in place. Just line up the bolt holes, lightly press it down. Now, what goes on there next is the filter. 
But we don't want this gasket sticking to here. So on this side, we're going to put just a little bit of grease. Okay, and that'll sit on there. So when we take this apart, the gasket will stay on the hogshead, and this will just lift off. So I'm going to grab a little grease. Doesn't take much. Okay. Just a reel. Just so it doesn't stick. More of a little film than anything. This will make taking this out and cleaning it, if need be, a lot, lot simpler. So you just give a very, very light coat. I mean, we use red grease here, but as you can see, not much at all. So we'll set that into place, like so. And then we're also going to grease this side. Because then this gasket that's next, we are going to seal to the cover. So like I say, we are just making a real thin film. This will also help the gasket seal. But there again, we're not trying to seal up a submarine. Okay. Go ahead, paper towel over my hand. You got a rag over here. So next we're going to take our cover. Put just a little, real, real faint amount of the right stuff on there. Okay, got a little much there. We're going to take off. Then we'll set our gasket on there. And I know this isn't rocket science. But. So, you can see the holes are lined up. We're going to set this over here. Kind of going to look at our holes here. Like so. I'm going to set this on here. Like that. Sometimes it gets a little tricky. Lining up, see, all those pieces. That's why we just get them started. Take our screwdriver and just snug these down. When we're all done, we'll wipe off this little bit of grease that shows, you know, the filter. When we're all done, I'll probably paint that black where that sticks above just for aesthetics. Remember now we're not really torquing on these just tight that's it okay 
That's done. So now if we ever need to check that, the one gasket will stick to the hog head, hog's head, the other gasket will stay on the lid, nothing will stick to the filter, and then we can take that out, rinse it off or inspect it, and we won't hurt the gaskets. Alright, I'm going to reposition the motor here and uh, we'll start on the manifolds or the generator. Haven't decided yet. Be right back. Okay folks, I think I've decided to uh, put the generator on. This was a rebuilt generator that I purchased through Langs. Um, you might ask the question, why didn't I rebuild it myself? Number one, the generator that we had was extremely worn out. I picked it up by the gear off the floor. The amount of end play was crazy. Plus when I picked the gear up, it was so worn and sharp, I cut my finger. So that just goes to tell you she's had a lot of use. I added up all the parts and what it would cost to, done it our, to do it ourselves. And for like $25 more in actual cost, including the shipping, because shipping was free. We got this one from Langs. It's been tested. The third brush, which I asked them, is set at a very low amperage. It came painted, uh, did not come with the gear on. We purchased a new gear and a pin, and off camera, we put the pin in and swedged it over on each end while backing up the shaft. Never want to bang on the shaft. So we had a thin piece of quarter inch plate stood up here. So it, it just made sense because in my line of work, time is money. So we're getting a good product by people that know 100% what they're doing. And it's all good to go and been tested. So it should be 100% fine. So we have the new gear on. I put a little grease on there because it's a new gear, new timing gear. We don't really need that to have a dry start. Got the gasket out of the gasket set. And then cutouts. So, of course, the fun project cutouts aren't made anymore, which is a bummer. But we also uh, did a little research, and I have this new cutout, which is a diode cutout. It's made by, I don't know if that'll focus or not, yep. New Rex, just go on the old World Wide Web, and uh, I bought it directly from them. This is one set up for negative ground, because Model T's came negative ground. They didn't go positive ground to the Model A. Why? I don't know, but then they stayed positive ground for quite a while. But for whatever reason, you can run it either way, but when you order one of these, you have to decide whether it's negative or positive ground. So why not just go negative ground? So this is the way it came. Super nice. There's the little box. Kind of cool looking. It is a T5055-SS. I don't know if that'll focus or not. Uh, comes with a set of instructions. A lot of these parts do. You should take the time to read them. This is called a solid state reverse current cutout. It is a diode style. You can buy the diode and make these yourselves if you have a decent looking housing. So we have the two screws here to put this on. So we're going to put this cutout on. You just slide the one end under the brass stud, under the nut. Start one screw. Start the other screw and then we hold it forward. We will just snug these down a little in case we need to let it float. Sometimes the nut on the back back here will hit this where it's, it's bolted onto the little post. So. so we'll just get those down close. 
We'll take our half inch wrench and slowly tighten this down while pushing towards the back. We'll just snug this down so it's just tight. Then we will snug these two screws down and the cutout should be good. Okay, there we go. You'll see that the starter band cover is not on it. Uh, they were short covers. They come with a new one and that is on back order and being sent. I also left this off to remind me to check when we're all said and done how many amperage, what the amperage is running. So, Also, there's an oiler that goes in the end. I ordered a new one of those. We don't have it in right now. We'll put it on after it's on the motor so we don't accidentally bump it and break it because those little things to me are a little expensive, but there's a lot of tiny machining to those. So they're really not, but for the size of it, it's like, holy cow. But, so now we're going to stand this generator up like this, take our gasket and just lay it down on here. Only goes on, I think, one way. Yep. So the bolt pattern is staggered. So it goes on like that, we'll lay it over here. We're gonna take just a little, whatever I did with it here. Well, it walked off, oh, there it is over there. Some 3M gasket adhesive. That stuff's like boogers when it gets <laughs> on you. Sorry. And we're just going to put a little bit, just enough to hold the gasket in place. We aren't going to put any kind of sealer or adhesive on the other side. Because quite frankly, it doesn't need it. And if we ever have to take the generator off, the gasket will stay with the generator. All right, so the gasket is stuck on there, the cutout's on, the gear and the key is in, the pin is peened. So let's get ready to take it over to the motor. All right, be right back. All right, so we're back. We have our generator here with our gasket on. Of course, it slips in here, runs off the timing gear. We have our Bolts, there's two different lengths, two of them that are the same. One is a lot longer. The one that is longer goes through the longer piece on the front cover. Also holds the timer in place. So you just slide this up here, kind of wiggle it around, and the gear will slip in. Put it in like that. Should not go in hard. And then we'll reach in here, start a bolt. Now it can hang on the one bolt. We'll pick it up. Get the bottom one. You should all just pretty well screw in with your fingers. We'll put this long bolt in, like so. Put the timer bracket on it. And we're gonna leave that one. We'll snug it up, but we're gonna be loosening that one again. Because we're gonna put the timer on after we get this up there. 
So we take a, looks like a 5 eighths. Just get them snugged up here. Because these bolts were bead blasted, painted, and the threads chased. So we're just tightened up. We're just tightened up tight, not super duper. I'm using a real short ratchet, 3 8 drive. And usually I'm choked up on the handle quite a bit. Sometimes it looks like I might really be tightening something, but I usually choke up on the handle just to help control my over tightening. Then this bolt should still turn by hand. We're going to leave this one loose. So there, that's all there is to mounting the generator. Um, I think I'm going to move the motor around and let's put uh, the timer on and then we can tighten the generator down and the timer will be on and then uh, we'll move on to the manifolds. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm going to put the timer on so that we can put the uh, generator final bolt in and then we have the timer so it'll be on there. Now when we put this engine together, if you can remember, we put the modern seal in here. It fit very well, a little grease on it. So we don't need to put that packing kind of seal, wouldn't do any good. We can also leave out the little brass or tin piece that goes in there. In fact, it's suggested in the instructions that come, this is a new day timer. It tells you in there not to reuse that. It's because it can rattle around in there and or if it's if it's uh, deformed, it can cause a short. So we're just going to leave it out of there. Less parts is better. So in the instructions of the timer, be sure to read all the stuff that comes with his parts. They just, they just, I know instructions are, you know, for whoever, but there's a reason they spend the time and money to put them in there. It says installing your new day style timer says that if it's the brush is new and the timer's new, you should put a very thin layer of grease to the copper contacts and to the black surface in between the contacts. Run the timer for approximately 50 miles, wipe it out, and you'll never need to lubricate the timer again. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're not gonna get carried away with the grease. Light coat means light coat. So that's just what we're gonna do. If you don't like that, that's okay. You do it however you want to do it. I'm going to follow the manufacturer's deal. So here's our new new day timer. You know, this is the brush style timer. If you like the roller style, you put that on. It's, it's okay. So while we're here, so we don't forget, we're going to put that light coat of grease in the timer. And then after we get this engine running and that, we will clean out what's left in there. So just like that, just super, super light. So now we did that now so we don't forget it. So the next thing we gotta do is put the brush on. the brush. The other thing it says in the instructions to make sure this is free, that it's spring loaded. Because sometimes things can go wrong when it's put together, dropped in shipping, whatever. Make sure this brush isn't bound up. In the camshaft here there's a hole. This one happens to be pointing down. And there is a slot right there. What we do is we slide this over and right now gravity is going to take it down around. But it comes with a new little pin. We could turn the motor so that that hole is up, but we can manage. So there, we found the hole. We stuck that pin up in. Then there's this washer that goes over that holds the head of that pin in, like so. Then we start the nut 
on the end of the cam. Okay, now that does wiggle around a little bit, but that's okay. When we set the timing, it will, it, it'll lock this in place when we tighten the nut. We set the timing and we'll get rid of that variation. Once again, we'll take a three quarter inch wrench. We snug this down. We're not tightening up a crankshaft bolt on a 454. I'm just going to go good and snug. Like that. And that's it. Our brush is still spring loaded. It's tight. We'll double check it again. It should be good. Now we'll take our timer. Then we will hold it up here. You should feel it be spring loaded. Also, when you push in on it, it should turn relatively freely because we did a good job cleaning that out with the bead blaster and painting it. We will put the timing rod just straight up for now for the hole where the timing rod goes in. We'll come over here with our bracket. We'll snug that up. like so. And you still should be able to move your timer. That will get smoother as that plastic wears the little burrs off it. So we'll snug that down. And now our timer is installed and our generator is fully installed. So next we're going to uh, turn the motor here and we are going to put the studs in for the manifolds. Then we'll put the manifolds on. So yeah, even though you get all this work done, there's still a lot of stuff to do. So we're gonna reset and we'll be back. There, that was something else I did is put in the four new screws for the uh, timer wiring so we don't lose them because that happens. All right, now I'll reset and uh, we'll work on the manifolds. I will be right back. Okay, here we are. So we're going to use manifold studs. And uh, where are we at? There we are. We've got those threaded cleaned up in a bead blaster and painted. We're going to use the two nut method to put them in. Seems to be the simplest. There again, because we did all that prep work, the bolts are just right in. So we will snug them down. They have a shoulder on them. Sorry, get my big head in the way. I mean, you could put a vice grip on here if you want, if you didn't care what it looked like. Or you could put a stud installer in there, put them on. But we already have the nuts, so why not, huh? And heck, what would we in a big hurry for? It's, uh, yes, the sun is out, but it is about 9 degrees in December here in southwest Wisconsin. So what else better do we have to do today? Okay. 
by the two nut method. I hope you know what I'm doing. Where you start two nuts on, tighten them against each other, then turn on the outside one. Like I say, if you didn't care what it looked like, just put a vice grip on them and tighten them down. But I don't want to do it that way. Sun is it's kind of deceiving out it's shining through the shop window towards my eyes here looks like it's super nice out and it isn't bad for December as long as you know like the people in the Dakotas and kind of West Central of the United States got All right, last one. These manifolds can be kind of tricky to put on. Um, I had uh, three different manifolds with good threads on that uh, I had options with. I did check them all and they're all three were terribly warped. So, I mean, yes, you can you can heat them and persuade them and, you know, put the gland rings in, which we're going to do, and only put in the ones that line up and, you know, whatever. But so whatever you got budget for. But uh, an aftermarket replacement exhaust manifold is fairly cheap. It's uh, usually pretty straight. And uh, it just saves a lot of time and a lot of hassle down the road. And we're going to install it with the gland rings to, to help keep it from working in the future. All right, there, the four studs are in. Now, first thing we're going to do is we'll put the exhaust manifold on and uh, we will carefully Get that temporary, temporarily held up, then we'll do the intake, and then we'll put them all together. Can be a three-handed operation sometimes, but should be able to do it. Okay, I'll get set up, be right back. Okay, folks, we're back. Now, here is our new manifold. And sometimes the casting on these doesn't look very natural. So what I did, when I got it, I ran it through the bead blaster. And then that kind of smooths up the casting a little bit, takes off all the little loose flecks. Then I painted it with uh, cast iron high temperature paint. Is that going to burn off? Yep. But at least it protects it while we're working on the rest of the car so it doesn't turn orange on us. Um, so and it looks nice for now. But So I did take, as you can see, I put the gland rings in the manifold because it is a new one. I held it up to the motor and they all four went right in. Okay folks, what I've done, let me see where we're at here, is if you can see, uh, I started with these gaskets, uh, slots facing down. And I've put the gland rings in, but I did not push them all the way down in. I left them a little proud so that they can go into the engine a little bit. Then they'll kind of center themselves up. So let's try to do this without knocking everything apart. Okay, one end started. And that end is in. All right, so that went way too easy. So then I'm going to take one of our clamps. I'm going to temporarily put it straight up and down like that. And just, I'm not on the little pad, I'm just straight up. And we're just going to snug it like that. And I'm going to do the exact same thing 
on this end. That'll be our extra set of hands. I'm going to actually flip that nut over because it's only painted on the one side. There we go. So just, just finger tight. Now that's going to hold our exhaust manifold in place. So now I will get the intake manifold ready, put the gland rings in it. Hopefully we can sneak it in past the gasket. And then we should be able to put our two clamps here, get them on the correct way, and then we'll be able to turn these down and put that on. So, all right, I'll get the uh, intake ready. All right, so I got the gland rings in the intake. I left them proud as well because we need to kind of work it around, get it through the gasket, and you'll feel it when it gets into the block. We'll take one of our little clamps, one on the exhaust manifold, one on the intake, finger tight. We will do the same on the other side. put our nut on. Once again, all this prep to the fasteners makes a difference. Now we're just going to kind of wiggle the intake around a little bit. There, it went in a little farther. So that one poked in. And it doesn't go, so the gland rings are locked in. Okay. So we're just going to lightly snug that, like so. Now this clamp is holding the intake and the exhaust manifold as well as this one. We can loosen this clamp up, spin it the right direction, and start it. I remember the first one of these I did, I didn't do it that way. And it turned, I'm going to turn this nut over because it's painted on the other side. And uh, it turned into about a forehand operation with some colorful language and questioning why I was doing it. So, take and we'll snug those down too. See that one loosened up a little. We're crushing those gaskets in. We will check those again after that gasket compresses and the engine is ran. So there, there is our uh, manifold, manifolds. Um, so yeah, that went uh, relatively well. Helps, to, it's worth the money to buy a new manifold. Uh, I'm just telling you now. If that would have been an original warped one, we wouldn't be able to use all the gland rings and that would not have went so smoothly. Intakes are never a problem. Well, never say never. So uh, we're going to uh, pick out the last few little pieces here and put them on. And then uh, this engine is pretty much ready to be covered and take a little vacation while we work on the chassis before it gets to go home for the final time. So stay, stay there. I'll be right back. We're getting ever so close. Okay. I should have done this before I put the intake on, but we're going to put this little oiler on. And let me get right up there. I don't know if you know how these work or not. 
takes a little screwdriver in the end because the outside is twists, you know, spring loaded that opens to the hole. So what I did, the hole lines up with the slot in the end. It's kind of smart thinking. So you could be off 50-50. So I took and made a little felt tip mark or pen mark to where when the hole is straight up. So when you twist this open, hard to do without it threaded in. You twist it open, the hole will be up to put your oil in. So I pre-marked that. So we're gonna start it here. And the end of the generator, take our screwdriver. Like I say, this would have been better. So we'll just turn this in, and when it starts to get tight here, there you go, that little marker line is up, you turn it like this, and your oil hole is up. So when you put the oil in, it can run in. I think that little booger's like 30 bucks. I do have some old ones laying around I could have taken apart and cleaned, and, but the little spring in them's probably broke. And, well. Anyway, so there's a little oiler for that. And the last thing we're going to do, so we have an exhaust nut here. This is one I had in my stash. Don't know where it came from. Probably a box of auction stuff. But we polished it up. We'll screw that on the end of the exhaust here. Just to protect those threads. And there it is, folks, except for the carburetor. And uh, I mean, that could have went on here, but we're not going to do that because, well, we haven't rebuilt it yet. Um, the only other thing to be bolted on this engine is the starter and then the cooling outlets and stuff like that. We have all that stuff. But uh, we don't want to put any of that stuff on. The motor stand is in the way of putting the starter and the water out, or the water, that would be the inlet. Yes. This is the outlet. Uh, and then this one up here, because it is the 26 style, are kind of hard to find, and we don't want to do anything silly by bumping it and breaking it. So we're going to leave that in a safe place. Otherwise, we put everything we can on this engine. Um, so I guess this is the final video in this series. We've, uh, I think, made a pretty good looking engine here. These spark plugs are just used ones. I've just got them threaded in here to keep the stuff out of the the uh, holes. Sometimes I have customers that walk in like to look at stuff when I'm outside or something. So it just reduces temptation. We will wait for the generator band cover to come. We won't put that on until after we have set the third brush to remind us to check it. So there we have it. We've taken uh, bunches of piles of parts, an engine that someone had already started and uh, put some time and money into. And uh, we were able to finish that up. I hope that gentleman is looking down from the uh, big heaven and smiling. And then uh, we're going to the next videos. We'll be working on chassis and wheels and firewall and coil boxes and ignition switches and all that good stuff. Wiring. And then we'll be assembling the truck. So there we go. I appreciate everybody watching. I appreciate the fact that we're already over 300 subscribers, which is awesome. Um, our goal is to just keep slowly building. Uh, we're not going to do anything silly to get the channel to build. I just want people to watch it because they like it. So, and I think this stuff not being shared uh, is a big waste. So that's why we do it. And if you don't agree with me, that's okay on some of this stuff. It's all right. That's how you... Everybody's got their opinion. So... Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Ring that bell. And uh, watch some other guys that do this too. So, All right, thanks. See you next time.